Okay, so this car behind me is gonna be, you're gonna watch this the whole way through, the whole process. So it's gonna go from uh, where we're sitting today to a full turnkey car. This one's a very special restoration because it's actually a CK Bethurst LCX one Okay, so this one's now finished. As far as getting its um, work done, it needed to be blasted, it needed to be put back into a, uh, a climber. This is gonna go back off to the uh, panel shop now. So the chassis rails have had repairs. Yeah. A pillars. Nice. Sill panels. Three quarters. So this one's been in the panel shop for the last three and a half months. It's just finished its ceramic coat. I actually organized a ceramic coat for this before it came to me. Just so the body work is spot on. Um, so this one is about to come back and have its reassembly. Oh, what's that? Oh, look at that. Oh, more, more. Tirana. Pity they don't make these trims anymore. They used to make these trims, now you can't buy them anymore. Is that end of life? I don't know. Which obviously means that those trims are going to be really expensive. Like, be two grand wouldn't surprise me. Because you can't buy them. These parts that I require for the car, depending on which model it is, but some parts are interchangeable between HKT and G and LC Tirana, so there's little bits of screws and bits and pieces that, that may be, but nothing fits as good as original. Pretty cheap, uh, it's just down the road, uh, a bit more. Right, so if you've been watching these videos, this car behind me is getting reassembled. I put the front end in, and there's a video about me doing the reassembly of the front end. But the issue that I've got is that those brake rotors, even though they're new, were really, really old and they've actually got some rust in them. And there's something not quite right about them because the holes weren't exactly lining up with the hubs. Don't know why. So the best thing for me to do is to replace those with some new ones, uh, which is what I've done. So I'm replacing uh, those hubs. That'll be done today. So you just see a quick video about how I'm gonna pull those hubs off uh, with my brother's help today, because uh, he's here for the rest of the week to give me a hand. And uh, we're putting the brake pads in, the are conditioned calipers are sitting over there so the whole idea about this car is to get it off the blocks and onto its wheels today so I can then get it on the ramp behind me and start fitting all the lines and everything else that needs to happen with it so we're going to get stuck into that now you're going to see how those rotors come off and then what we put back on and make sure that obviously we've uh, used the bearing grease on everything uh, put it all back together get the wheels onto it get this thing onto the ground so let's go
paint shop guys, they think you're head. They fill in the threads for me so they don't have paint and all sorts of crap in there. It just makes it easy for me to thread everything back up. One eternity later. So while I have to pause on uh, finishing off the, the rear end, I'm still waiting on some re-zinc parts. I'm gonna just get started on the brake stuff, but um, it's, it's interesting to show you. I mean, look, sometimes I get some parts that have come from the customer that have been reconditioned. I've actually redone this one myself, uh, but because uh, that was the old one for the customer, but uh, he sent me through, this has been reconditioned, this has been reconditioned, but they've been sitting there for so long that now they're starting to corrode again. Uh, and interestingly, I've never seen a master cylinder with glue in it to, uh, I don't know, maybe stop it rusting, who knows? So that's gonna be interesting. See how we go getting all that out. Uh, but you know, what I'll do today is I'm just gonna assemble this. Uh, I've gotta get this sticker off. I don't know why the previous place stuck on there, but anyway, you know, uh, just to clean it all up. Look, the condition of this isn't too bad, but it's got some scrapes along the way. I'll just um, touch those up and probably replace this with the cleaner one. Uh, I'm just gonna check this pre-tensioner load on the push rod, because this is meant to go on here. And it's just not meant to be touching, so I can check that. And then it was missing some bits and pieces like the cleavers pin and the pin for the back of the, the rods and whatever. So I'll start putting it together just so I can sort of test everything. It was missing this cover as well. Um, so I've had some bits and pieces and what I'm going to do is start putting it together. And hopefully get this into the car today. A lot of work around these cars is also test fitting as well, make sure it actually fits on correctly because sometimes you have to pull everything off again and get started again. So I'll just uh, get these on. These have been re-zinked. Luckily, I've got uh, the original bolt still sitting on here, which makes it easier to put back into the car when it's on. Now, these boosters were 
like to be made in Australia. And this is a double diaphragm booster, so for the XG ones, they actually had uh, a better braking performance, even though they were using the original Gerlock uh, front calipers. They had a space here in between them with thicker discs because they would heat up. And also on these particular XG ones, they were uh, they deleted the, the the splash trays on the side of the. Uh, K-frame for your brakes because they wanted to vent more and hence the reason why they put uh, an air dam at the front of the car so it pushed the air onto the brakes as they used to heat up. Look, these cars from factory were set up to actually go race so even on the K-frame there's a couple of extra holes in the top so that you could adjust the camera angle. Um, you know, they were reasonably serious cars. Towards the end they were putting out, you know, the mid to high 200 horsepower uh, horsepower output on the Bathurst versions, the late uh, 73 Bathurst versions. Um, you know, a car that weighed 898 kilos, that's uh, that's a lot of power for a small car. So they were pretty serious in their day. Um, and up against some amazing cars that you see in the shed here as well, uh, like the GDHO Phase 3. Uh, they, they beat that car uh, in the famous Bathurst race because uh, they outperformed them with brakes. So uh, the, the heavier cars had more power, the V8s, but these ones just blew past them when it came to braking because uh, they were more efficient and that's what we're working on today. Anyway, I'm just test fitting everything up at the moment. And we'll get this into the car shortly. You can find some, and this is one of the reasons why I guess people come to me is because I've just got boxes and boxes full of the correct reason nuts and bolts, which you need. Right, this pre-tensioned uh, push rod should be sitting in around about, it should be sticking out about eight to nine mil out of the face, the face of the booster, which it roughly is. So it's probably the right tension, but um, what I'll do is when I put it all together and I test the brakes, I'll, uh, I can adjust this to get a better tra uh, pedal uh, travel as well. And I can also do that for um, uh, the back of the booster as well, uh, where it connects to the brake pedal, there's actually an adjusting rod there as well. So. Just got to make sure that your brakes clearly aren't locked on, um, but have enough travel so that it's correct and a good pedal pressure feel. Anyway, I'm going to just grab some more bolts and we'll get this into the car.
just goes in through the biggest hole where my finger is here. Yep.
There it is. So it's now on all fours. Brakes in the rear are in, handbrake cables are in. I uh, had a few issues with one side putting the drum back on because somebody belted the axle where you're just meant to be a little bit gentle with it and they buried the edge, so we had to sort that out. Uh, front brakes went in pretty well. Obviously sitting up really high at the moment and the wheels are actually sitting out like that. I'll actually adjust the wheels to tow it in a bit further, but then it's gonna go off once it's finished to go get its wheel on it done. Um, but it's handy to get it at this stage because now I can move this car from here. Uh, once I've finished with this limited one, uh, I can swap them over. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the next thing now, is to start cracking on with this one. I'm gonna put some windscreen wiper mechanisms in behind the back uh, and then move it on to here because this one here, I can do a lot of work on the ground. So important phase to get it off right like this. And now I can get it onto the hoist, put the lines in the brake lines, everything else, and then uh, get it to the point where I can start doing the rest of the car, engine, interior, the whole lot. Keep watching.